Hi, the topic for this presentation is Java annotations. By the end of it, you should know what annotations are, the different advantages of using annotations and the different types of annotations that are provided by Java. Annotations are a powerful meta elements or meta tags that were first provided in JDK 1.5. When you use annotations to mark your Java classes, methods, or fields, they provide them a special value. An annotation is marked with the at symbol. It starts with the at symbol followed by the annotation name. Annotations provide several advantages. To name a few, they take away the broiler or redundant code away from your application so that our Java classes can concentrate on the business logic. A good example would be the JUnit 4 framework. JUnit 4 is completely an annotation based framework. Before JUnit 4, if we had to write a JUnit test class, we had to inherit a JUnit test case and then all our test methods should be prefixed with the test keyword so that the JUnit framework knows that the, the methods are test methods. But starting JUnit 4, all we need to do is to mark our test methods with the at test annotation and at runtime, the JUnit framework knows that a particular method is a test method by looking at this marker annotation. Another advantage of using annotations is that they move our applications away from XML or any other configuration files. So once we start using annotations, everything is in the code and we need not maintain additional configuration files. When I do the Spring hands-on in the next session, you will see how we can use Spring annotations instead of the Spring XML configuration to configure dependency injection. Java offers three types of annotations. First one is the marker annotation and a good example for a marker annotation is the at test annotation from the JUnit framework. So as soon as you mark a method with the at test annotation, as I have mentioned, JUnit framework at runtime will look at this annotation and figure, figure out that it is a test method. The marker annotations doesn't have any parameters. The single element annotation, the second type of annotations, has one parameter. A good example again is the test, at test annotation from JUnit framework, which takes in the parameter, the expected uh, parameter, which is nothing but the exception you are expecting in your test class. So the JUnit framework at runtime looks at the exception you are expecting and if your method doesn't throw that exception at runtime, the method under test, if it doesn't throw the exception at runtime, your JUnit framework will fail that particular test method. The third type of annotations in Java are the multi-element annotations, where your annotations have multiple parameters separated by commas. And a good example is the at web service annotation provided by the JAX WS standard. Once you use the web service annotation and you provide the endpoint interface, the name and visitor location, the web service frameworks like Apache CXF can, will mark your Java classes as web services and they can generate the appropriate endpoints and the visitors at runtime. The JDK by default offers three simple annotations. They are the at deprecated annotation, which when you use to mark your classes or fields or uh, methods, will mark them as deprecated. And if some other class or method tries to use them, they will receive a compile time warning saying that the method or field is deprecated. The at suppress warnings does the opposite. So if you use a deprecated method or class or field from some other uh, API, within your uh, Java class, you can suppress the warnings that are provided by the compiler during the compile time using the at suppressed warnings, at suppressed warnings. And the at override annotation is used to mark your inherited methods. So when you are extending a class and when you are overriding a method from that class, and if you mark that particular method using the at override annotation in your subclass, then the Java compiler makes sure that you have followed the rules of overriding it. That is, the method signature matches that from uh, matches that of the parent's method signature. 
Java also offers meta annotations, that is, annotations of annotations, and these are used to come up with your own custom annotations. And all these frameworks like JUnit, Spring, when they come up with their own annotations, they use the annotations under the meta annotations API. And I will present them in the future when I show you how to create a custom annotation. To summarize, now you know that Java annotations are meta elements or tags that when you use to mark your classes or methods or fields, provide them a special value. There are several advantages of using Java annotations. To name a few, they move away the redundant code from your Java classes so that your Java classes can concentrate on the business logic. They also get rid of the XML or any other kind of configuration and everything now lies in the code so it's easy to read and understand the Java code. Third, by using annotations like at override, you can make sure that uh, your code performs as expected during compile time instead of waiting until the runtime to find the errors. In the next session, I'll be presenting Spring annotations. That is, we'll use Spring annotations to configure dependency injection for our Java applications. So you will see Spring annotations in action. Until then, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.